Hey all there, EG back, and today I'm looking over the expanded roster mods, um, which has joined forces with the Orion Yos factions team. And we're going to deal with a very interesting faction, the Dawizar, or the Chaos Dwarves. Now I'm sure most of you know, it's highly likely in Warhammer 3 we will see this faction at some point. When? Well that's another question, but I'd be amazed if they're not in there at some point. So a team of Decomposed, Tanit, Chrysoid and Twitchy decided that it was way too long to wait for the Chaos Dwarves, so they made this roster, and what a roster it is. This mod has been around for a while, but now they have teamed up with the Os Factions team, which I'm also doing a series of videos on, link in the top right hand corner. So it's an ideal time now, as they have had a 5 skull rating to look at more quotes To use this roster, in just a custom battle, you need the expanded roster Chaos Dwarves. If you want to play them in campaign, you need the OVN Yoss Factions Part 1 and 2, the OVN Chaos Dwarves, and the Expanded Roster. There's also an optional sub mod for the VFX, which is also by OVN. All the links will be in the description and in a highlighted comment. So, this will be a complete guide of all the units which are in this Expanded Roster the team have made. So, make sure you have a beverage of your choosing, as there's a lot of units here to get through, as in over 40. And as always, I'm using Ultra Settings. Let us start off with the Ords. On the Eda of the Chaos Dwarves, which you'll be using in over Yenyos factions, a Drasioth the Ashen, the Ord of the Black Fortress. He's a powerful fire sorcerer and fighter, with ruthless ambition and innate cunning. Chaos Dwarves are more attuned to Winds of Magic, unlike the dwarf, their Dwarf kin, and have powerful catters, all wrapped in the traditional Dwarf style, such as very tough high armour and defensive units. So in the army, Drazov adds some truly great combat stats. 60 attack and defence means he's potent no matter where, what you do with him, and provides fire attack on his melee attack. With high armour, and shielded means he's a nightmare to deal with, and of course he's a potent fire mage, making him a truly terrifying mix of combat yard and tough sorcerer. With armor piercing, it's 160, which is not high, but it's not too bad. Abilities, he has stand or die, an arcane conduct, and all the fire mage spells. One more ability, which is on all chaos dwarf units, is Rentness, increasing the speed by a small amount. He can also be mounted on his great Taurus, Cinder Breath, boosting his ability in combat, where he also gains the magic missile in form of a dragon breath from the creature. And Brazing Body increases weakness to the fire against the enemy. Another thing of note, a lot of the and heroes and some of the high tier units have fire resistance, which is a bit of a chaos dwarf trait. And this particular character has a resilience of resistance of 75%, meaning a nice burning head spell will pretty much do no damage to him whatsoever. And now onto the other yords. First one is the cheapest, which is the Bull Centaur Yord. Much like the Centaur of the Beastmen, they are fast with decent armour and decent offensive abilities, but they're just a bit more defensive than the Beastmen unit. At 84 speed, and with a reasonable damage, if only 150, 150 is AP, they run down a lot of yords or heroes. They will cause struggle with named characters, but they'll put up a decent fight, and of course, can escape easily due to their fast speed. Personally, running the units with more of his kin is best to add a bit more punch and of course protect the Yord from getting killed too easily. Your standard Chaos Dwarf Overyord is a short range missile specialist. While in combat, he's your typ typical Chaos Dwarf high armour and OK melee and defensive skills, and does provide a nice bit of damage at 234.5. The range is where his skills die, with the same engineering buff that a Dwarf engineer has, ballistic calibration. With his stats and artillery is where the Chaos Dwarves shine, so this yard is particularly potent, potent when put at the back. However, the emphasis is on, on short range, and at only 120, he can't even provide a yard, the yard unless he gets close. And then his damage is considerable with 200 AP damage, so it's a fine bouncing act to keep him buffing your units at the back or pushing forward. Personally, I even at the back until the combat is joined, and the range firepower. Is now is not as useful as it was at the start. Then you can move him into position to help him fight. He's also pretty tough to kill, so he can provide decent protection for your ranged weaponry. But some support is advisable, 
so he can take more shots as another unit holds the line. If you want to him to be more combat yard, you can always put him on a great Taurus to boost the combat stats, but then they acts the missile firepower. But it is a definitely an interesting option and gives you a bit more flexibility with what you want to do with this yard. A rare trait for the Chaos Dwarves is a Brave Chaos Dwarf, as they tend to have a lot of of their expendable work units do their work for them while they're safely at the back. But Rykath is known for the, his toughness and courage, with high armour, great melee attack and a bonus to anti arge of 35, and a nice bit of AP at 285. Naturally there's a great yard to have up front causing damage and hunting down single anti arge units or other yards and heroes. He can also put a damage down on any unit and being highly armoured and decent defence he's not someone you need to babysit much. Just watch out for a duelist or high combat yards or heroes. However, there are no mount options for Rakaev, and on the air, it's obviously unbreakable. One of the most cruel and brutal yards is Zaitan the Brack, which is quite an achievement, as all Chaos Dwarves are known to be this, and yet Zaitan still stands out even more. Serving the great sorcerer, Garoth the Cruel, and he has yet many exhibitions into the Orkians, crushing all that opposed him, taking numerous saves and working them into a frenzy for his greed for new weapons is never ending. Another potent combat yard with magical attacks and even better damage with a 315 AP buff, but no entry yard buff this time. Zartan is just a very good combat yard and can definitely provide some extra punch to any fight, and he also has perfect vigour and expert charge defence. The Arse Yard look at is a Sorcerer Prophet of Shadows, an interesting choice. Much like Jazioff, this is another caster, in the usual dwarf high armour and shielded, but with worse weapon strength, and it's just not the combat yard that the, the previous dwarf unit was. But he does provide the same ballistic calibration, so he's just as potent in that sense. And with the same stats and his ranged firepower, this unit is pretty scary. He may be slightly worse in combat, but can still hold his own, and he has shadow spells as well, meaning this yard has various ways of creating damage. If that was enough, he also has Dark Fire of Chaos, an ability where you have to be close, but it can be used against a large target such as a giant or even better a tree man, as it can do some great damage, making this a, a great yard a great all round choice and a personal favourite. Now we move on to the heroes. And the first one is the Hobgoblin Khan. The Hobgoblins have strong ties to the Chaos Dwarves. When the screen skins nearly destroyed the Chaos Dwarves in an uprising, the Hobgoblins betrayed their cousins and sided with the Chaos Dwarves, saving them, and now they are the perfect swage for them. Which of course, the other green skins were not pleased with, and now mutual hatred between them exists. They are slightly larger than goblins, and even more vicious, and of course even more treacherous than goblins. This is the cheapest hero you can field, and is actually a reasonable combatant, while the atmosphere strength of the bigger green skins. Hobgoblin are no pushovers in a fight, and can do a bit of damage, and are reasonable on defence, especially with a silver shield, but we do yak the armour. They have the classic swippery ability, increasing their defence, so they definitely have their uses. Making a great tool to either fast wolf cavalry on charges, and give them a bit more potency. For a more potent combat hero, you can go for this unit, a much tougher and harder hitting hero, but it can only be taken on foot. Useful as a guardian or as a nice leadership buff to your front line. 140 AP damage is not great, so his damage potency is limited, but it does have the ability's deadly onslaught to boost the damage. So you can't take out a hero or yord, but it would be a bit of a stretch to kill the named yords of the game. But they would also struggle to kill him quickly and can provide some damage in the front line as needed. Lastly, we have the Demon Smiths, which are the caster heroes of the Chaos Dwarves. All possessing the high armour and the old potency with only 90 AP. There are three to choose from, being Death, Shadows, and this one, which is Metal. All provide the usual magic abilities with these yours, giving you some options for your casters. Which is, if you're used to playing normal dwarves, gives you some interesting options for your armies.
So with the Lords and Heroes out of the way, let's start off with the infantry. First up, the Goblin Sways, which as the name suggests, are not going to be much good. They have terrible leadership, terrible stats, and unsurprisingly, at 150 points, they are completely expendable. Pretty much use them as a cheap tar pet unit. Now in other cases, when it comes to tar pet units, you can buff them with magic and spells, which the your particular yords or heroes can provide. As in the Chaos Dwarves don't we really provide these buffs, there's the odd one, but not ma nothing major. These are pretty much completely throwaway units. And you can't really buff them, either to heal them or to increase their stats. So all you can pretty much do is put them in the way of an advance. Hob, Goblin, Cutthroats are a step up from Goblins, but not by much. With notable leadership improvements and a very nice silver shield. This unit is still pretty awful, but this is a bit better as a target unit at 300 cost. Saying all this, I do prefer them as they are a bit tougher to get through. Not by much, but at least they can so soak up some missile fire on their silver shields. Comparing them to the goblins from the green skins, this unit does more damage, better melee attack and charge, but the defence on the goblins is slightly higher. With a bit of theme forming, the orc slaves are just a bit better than hobgoblin cutthroats, and is again another target unit, but they can actually cause some damage when or if they hit anything. With one shield, a nice tactic I like to use is to push up the hobgoblins in front of these, hoping the AI hits them with missiles. Then this unit can get in there and do some solid damage. Yes, the combat stats are still pretty bad, but they do provide a small bit of punch for a tar pit unit. And this gives you some more options. Especially when going up against other factions like Skaven, Greenskins and Petonia, who have some of these tar pit units themselves. So finally, we actually start looking at the Chaos Dwarf Warriors themselves. So the obvious thing, what is the difference between these and your normal Dwarves? Well, not much to be honest. There's two things to note though. One is that Chaos version are a bit more heavy hitting with four more weapon strength. The other thing, Dwarves have a natural resistance to magic at 25%. Chaos Dwarves, being having a natural affinity with the Winds of Magic, do not have this, but they do have the Rientius ability which I mentioned before, so they're slightly quicker, being at 30 when the battle starts. And for 50 more points you can also give them a great, great weapons to add for their AP. The Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits are much like the Nasty Stalkers. This unit, at 550, is all about that bit of extra AP damage at 18, and provides some sneaky attacks. They are better than Nasty st Stalkers, providing better leadership, attack and defence, all by 4, for the extra 50 points. With Stork and Vanguard, they can do some nice rear attacking, and being reasonably quick, they can get around the battlefield well for a unit on foot. While they're nothing special, 160 models coming from behind with AP is definitely not suffered to take the Irie, and can cause some quick losses when they attack from the rear. So this does increase their damage potential a bit more, especially when you charge them into a weakened unit. So much like the Nasty Stalkers, don't take this unit Yairi as it is quite useful when fighting heavy armoured factions. At 700 points, the Infernal Guard are buffed up Chaos Dwarves, and have increases across the board. This is the Dwarf equivalent of the Yongbeards, where they don't provide the leadership buff to the other units that the Yongbeards do. This unit does provide much better defence, which is 8 more than the Yongbeards. It's a great unit to have in your front rank to really stop the enemy in the tracks. As always, Dwarfs are a pain to get rid of, be it normal Dwarfs or Chaos. And when the defence is this high, you can see why. 50 points more, you can equip them with Fire Graves. Which has damage, fly damage to an attack and a noticeable increase in damage. Especially with that 27 AP, but we do sacrifice the defence, so be aware of that. It's a nasty counterpunch unit, allowing other units to take the hit and move these in to add more damage, hopefully breaking the unit. Sadly, as most Chaos Dwarves do, they do not have a charge bonus to fully make use of this counter charge, but the damage is still decent, especially with fire attacks. Now for Regiments of Renown. Not many in this roster, as this is the, this one and then there's one in the artillery, which I'll get to later. This one, the Infernal Iron Sword, is a very powerful Infernal Guard unit. 100 points more at 800. This unit is beefed up defence, attack and leadership and slightly more weapon strength compared to the normal unit. Add to the fact that they do magical attacks with a dark forged weapon means it is a great unit to put in a 
back or in the middle of the front line. One shame, it does not encode other units, which would make it even better. The Achaeites of Hashat are one of the few units in the Chaos roster with an anti arch bonus. On the whole, when you look at the Fist faction, it mainly uses artillery or ranged firepower to bring down the arch threat or heavy AP units. This one, however, is dedicated to the anti arch with 26 and has some really impressive stats by a yo unit count. The main goal for this unit is any single entity or yo model count yard units. They will suffer against a yard quality cav force due to the Akan numbers. I note there is no charge defence, so it's something to take into account. However, they are very good at what they do. Huge armour and melee defence. A lot of damage on their attacks with 40 AP, and the magical damage means they can really do some great work. As long as the right target is chosen. And here's only 850 points, so it's a useful unit to have in every Chaos Dwarf Yist. So we have a large mean orc, and you think I can prove on this. Give some decent armour and maybe some discipline, point them in the right direction, perfect. So if you ever wondered who is the brain for the Black Orcs, it's hierarchy, the Chaos Dwarves had something to do with it. As they basically did what we did, I just said, and created the Black Orcs. Now I'm sure a lot of people watching this would realise this was a seriously bad idea, as, our no as Orcs are known to your fighting and pretty much impossible to control. Chaos, Chaos Dwarves though are arrogant little fellas and they thought they could do anything and this one choice nearly wiped them out as the Black Orcs led the way to overthrow their creators. Thankfully for the Chaos Dwarves and as previously mentioned the Hobgoblins rebelled and they survived. Uh, the Black Orcs then well, did what the Black Orcs do and decided to annoy everybody else instead but they have a deep special hatred for the Chaos Dwarves faction. The unit themselves is okay, but nothing spectacular, coming in at 900 points. They do decent damage and are immune to psychology, but the actual stats are pretty young. We do have their high armour, which means they are pretty tough, but they're not as good as the Greenskins Black Hawks, who are bigger and meaner with improved stats. However, they are still a viable unit, and it feels right to have a couple of these units around. And I like to use them as another screen before the enemy gets to your really viable Chaos Dwarf units. The Zeit Berserkers are the Chaos Dwarf version of Swears, and are slightly different than their kin. They still have all the usual stats as in Unbreakable, and they do not care about armour, but they do not have the anti arch bonus that Swears do. They focus on anti infantry, and they have a 12 bonus in that, and 16 AP damage. This means you have to flip them on how you use them. They still provide a pretty quick unit for a Dwarf, but this is yes a problem for Chaos Dwarves, as they have a lot of franking units which are pretty quick, but we'll get to those later. Of course they can still be used as franking attackers and do decent damage to boot. I personally don't think they are useful as sprayers, but they are, can provide an alternative use for the Chaos Dwarves. The arse of the Mie infantry are the Immortals, the highest damage dealing infantry and are very good in defence as well. They have 38 AP and they do provide a lot of punch at their 1,250 cost and they can easily use to punch a hole straight through the centre or use them to patrol the back line. They don't have any charge defence so you need to keep them away from cavalry but are a useful option even though I prefer some of the monster units later on. Now we move on to the missile units. There are less options here than the dwarves have, but they do have a few options. And first of all, we got the green skin unit, the hobgoblin forces, which is a cheap, simple unit at 375. It's useful against your armored factions and is a nice cheap missile option. Their range is weak, so just check out for that. They're not an amazing unit, but they do provide a budget useful option if you're looking for some missile firepower. However, Chaos Dwarves on the whole have so many options for missiles, you can quite happily skip these. Pretty much what, what you expect from a Dowry Zark Warriors. They're exactly the same as the Dwarf version, but extra 50 points cost at 600. 
For an extra 50 points, you get 4 extra damage on weapon strength and that Chaos Dwarf Relentless buff. So not much really, but they are still as useful as any Dwarf Quarrier unit and can provide a home in, a, in any army. Now we deal with a much more close range damage, damage dealing unit, the Devastators. They only 100 range and at 750 cost, they're difficult to use but of course can be, uh, well, devastating. So you get slightly booster stats over the quarriers, and their shots have 4 projectors each. So with 80 in the unit, they can do some serious damage. However, getting them in the right place is a trick, and as long as you clear the franks and move this unit into position, they can easily make back their cost. As I was editing all this footage together, um, I was checking a few things on my roster, and I found out there was two more regiments of renown, which had been added in the game the day before. So, for the sake of completion, and because they're there, here's the first one, Varsax Horde. As you can see, they're a regiment of renown of Quarrels, they're 850 points. Stats are pretty similar, but of course they have some increases. The leadership is much better, plus 14. Then your standard Quarrels, me attack and me defense are above up by 10 and 12 respectively, and there's a small charge bonus as well. Other than that, they pretty much form exactly the same type of unit as any Quarrier. Much like the miners with explosive charges, this unit has a lot of combat utility. The bombs are powerful and can be used pretty much exactly the same way as miners. During my dwarf playthroughs, I always like to put two units of explosive charge miners right at the front to slow down the first wave and clear them a bit and then you can charge them in with your second rank. The exactly same tactic can be used here but these are much more expensive at 900 points. But they are a lot more solid, with much higher media defence over miners and the good armour. They're not a sentry unit, as unlike the miners, you cannot easily just throw them away due to the higher cost. But they're definitely still a good option in the front line. As those bombs give you some nice bonus damage before the first wave hits. The arse missile units are the Annihilators, a unit for your similarities to the Iron Drakes. But these are 1000 points compared to 900 for the Iron Drakes. This unit, however, is more than double the range of a dwarf unit, but has yes damage per shot. It does need mentioning that the missiles are framing attacks, so that's a bit more value added to each shot. They also have the snare ability to slow down enemy charges, which is okay, but nothing exciting. I tend to use these as a nice counter to cav forces. Have units around them to stop the initial charge. And then this unit can pick the, them off at long range, which is a very useful tool. As apart from your artillery, your missile ranges are quite are mainly close quarters. Onto the cavalry now, and here we're going to deviate from your standard dwarfs and talk about the more interesting options in the faction. The dwarfs are a sore army with no units of any real speed, apart from the gyrocopters. So the defensive lines are a very good tactic. The chaos dwarves are much quicker, I can actually be a very mobile army. First up, the hobgoblin wolf riders at 350 points. This unit is one of my favourites, and just a better version of goblin wolf riders. They are a breezy harassing unit at no real cost. Take them in to hassle any missile lines, and a couple of these units a great way to break up any lines in the inf of the enemy. I personally run with a couple in most armies. The Hobhound Ravagers at 700 points are just a much better version of the Arse unit. They have increases across the board and are at the same speed. Though they can still be useful with careful management, the cheaper Hobgoblin Wolf Riders can provide similar benefits and you can take two of them compared to one unit of these Ravagers. Where this unit could possibly go against the old tier Cav Force, I would still prefer two units of the fast cav, which are cheaper, as they can be thrown away or micromanaged to harass the irons, as there are better options for hard hitting cavalry. For an extra 100 points, you can get this unit, which may be not as quick, but has a bit more punch on the charge and causes fear, which is always useful on a cav force. I personally would spend this extra 100 points on this unit, as I feel it provides better value for the cost and a real, real useful tool for breaking missile infantry quickly and can actually do some damage to some cavalry units as well. 
The Bull Centers of Baha are an interesting choice at 1000 points. Their stats are increased again and are a great big deal tougher. They can actually hold their own against mid tier Cav and have anti arge bonus of 12 and an AP of 26. So they can put some damage down as well. While heavy armored Cav will kill this unit, just as Empire Knights, due to the vastly superior armor. Their base stats of this particular unit are much better and I'm assuming put up a decent fight. And that fear can sometimes swing at a close fight. Remember, the sensor are very quick and can maneuver around your knights, which are even better armoured. So use that to your advantage for quick charges in and out. So, another one of those new regiments of renown. These are the Guardians of the Tower of Tsar. Eight Bull Centers Baha unit. So, how do they differ to your standard one? Well, first of all, they cost 200 points more at 1200. The leadership is better by 10, better me attack, and of course defense. Defense is a big increase by 12, and there's four extra damage as well. So, like before, just a better all around unit. They are sort of central units now. And this one is a huge damage dealing monster of a unit. 1200 points and 62 AP damage, with frenzy as well, and decent me stats. Not forgetting how quick this unit is. They can provide a lot of offensive punch in a mobile army. A great counter-attacking unit, or just riding around the edges picking off high value targets. And they can even do some damage to Hero or Yord, as they have that much damage potential. 16 models is limiting, so, they, uh, so in that way they are similar to the Dragon Ogres. They're not as quite as damage dealing as those particular units, but they're just as mobile. And they are a lot cheaper than the 1,600 points cost of the Dragon Augers. They also have a rare encourage ability, meaning running this with other cavalry can bring a lot of benefits. The Hobgoblin Wolf Riders are the last cavalry unit to talk about. They are skirmish cavalry, and at 350, they can do a little bit of damage to weakly armoured units. But damage is not great, so I prefer the cheaper Wolf Riders. And use them as charging units, especially if you're facing your armored factions. This suit can be annoying to get rid of for some for particular factions, which have a lot of these type of yo armor units, such as the Skaven and the other green skins. But personally, I've always run with the actual Hobgoblin Raiders, which you saw before. Now we're on to the monsters, and again, a lot of interesting options here. First up, are the Sway Rogers. No great surprise that the Chaos Dwarves like the raw violence that the Ogres provide. So they have enslaved a number of them to provide more strength in their minds and on the battlefield. At 650 points, they provide a cheap option to do a lot of damage, and are great for punishing a Frank with the large Ogre Charge, as the sheer impact of these boots can we bring a lot of damage down. With 78p, they are a particularly large threat of a unit, and at such a cheap cost, they can be highly useful. So this is a particularly strange unit, especially when you think about it. The Yarva Trolls are 800 points, so more expensive than Ogres, but have yes leadership. But they do provide a bit more BA attack and defense. They do provide fire damage, and have decent AP of 65. However, the thing we know about true trolls is their ability to regenerate, and a counter to this is a weakness to fire, the standard 25%, which this Yarv trolls have, but they also have a 75 resistance to fire. So this is, unit is incredibly tough to deal with, as one of the main weaknesses is gone. While they're still one of the most stupid races in the Warhammer world, they're an interesting choice, and while I do have the brute power of an ogre, this unit can definitely give you port of thought when deciding which option to choose. Coming in at 900 points, this is another franking option. The Kaidir Fryborn are created by Hashid priests and they are half demon and half fire. So you get a yacht for 900 points. There's only 16 models, but they are unbreakable, they have fire damage, they have the Burt ability, dropping leadership by now minus 8 to anything they hit, AP of 39 and a bolster to infantry of 8. While the charge is not huge, which is a bit of a shame, 
and they also bring that Brazing Body debuff as well. Adding all that up, you get a lot of damage packed into this unit. With Fear, as well as that Burns ability, means attacking from behind or the Frank can really tank a unit's leadership very quickly. I can break a front line in a remarkably short time. Add the natural fire resistance of 75% and they provide so much value and are maybe a bit underpriced. As mentioned, when we're looking at yards, you can put them on a mount. And this is the mount as just a normal unit. At 1100 points, it's a very quick single moral beast, boosting the fire damage and the burn ability again. This unit hits hard, but does you have the IP at only 160. The leadership is low, however, and makes it likely to rampage, so something to be aware of. As there are quite a few weaknesses for this unit, the O armor and the O leadership, going straight into the center of the fight might, not be, might be best left to other units with high leadership. As when it rampages, it can quickly die as your armor and your ship is not a healthy mix. Hit some run tactics on your units are best, and it's especially good against artillery to get them off the battle nice and easily. Not a unit you need many of, but one in some armies is beneficial for shooting, shutting down missile or artillery units effectively if you haven't got the Goblin Wolf Riders to hand. This massive metal construct is an effective two in your army. It's unbreakable and can deal out a ton of damage with a huge AP of 300 and has very good defensive units for something so large. It also has the armour to match this up and can really stand on its own against most enemy units. It's highly useful as a dominant force of the centre of the army. At 1200 points, it's 400 cheaper than a normal giant. As this one is more focused on defence and holding the enemy, a rare thing of a large monster which can be used in the front line as it's tough enough to hold against most threats. Having some small units at its feet to help it not get surrounded or to target anti yard threats means this is a true rock of a front line force. This unique monster is a rare mutation of the Great Taurus and it's highly attuned to magic. So if you're running an army without any casters, throw this unit to give you some more choices. Where this unit is nowhere near the combat monster that the Great Taurus is, it's still pretty handy in a fight, and has higher leadership and will not one page, which is a great plus. The combat skills are still decent, I can see you pick on units to cause damage, and has got a little bit of defence, but has that still that yellow armour. Where it shines is its magic abilities. First, it's attuned to magic. As long as mana is high, it has magical damage, and resistance. Honey words allows the beast to summon a fair wyvern, give you more domination of the air. And it also comes with a magic missile, and it's much like your standard breath spell you get with a dragon. Handy for picking off new units up from afar. Adding to the magic list, it can summon a fire sto frame storm, highly useful in any army, without resistance to fire. And the debuff in Feebring Fall, making it a useful unit as a different option in the army. I possibly not want it. If you're using a Yorda hero, which is a caster, but the summons of your own makes you think it could definitely pay for itself. Oh yeah, it's only 1,400 points, which seems a bit cheap to me. The arse of the monster units is this beast. A great unit on foot, which can cause huge damage anywhere. and can charge in the fight if you get worries, as the armor is so high. Naturally, still a small bit of caution is needed, because the defense is quite low. But the, this creature will still last a decent while in a fight. High melee attack and AP values of 280, both boosted by Frenzy, means there are a few monsters that can defeat such a unit. Given that it's unbreakable as well, and has a brazen debuff, means 1,600 points is a real option if you need a large heavy damage dealing unit. Naturally, this would get, get targeted by some heavy firepower and anti yard unit, and its health pool is not huge for, for a creature of size, so you cannot yield to its own devices like the Chaosus. First up in the artillery section is a cheap and cheerful Hobgoblin Bolt Thrower at only 450 points. It is one of the cheapest artillery in the game, but noticeably worse than the Dwarf version, which is better stats in every single area. However, if you're saving cash, then this unit is handy, but I personally would save the money and spend it on a more devastating artillery, which the Chaos Dwarves have a yacht of. 
Much like the Hellstorm from the Empire, which launches three voids per model, the Death Shrieker is a great horde killer. And with the right hero or yours standing nearby to buff its accuracy even more, it can be pretty good as it. It does not have the pure damage that the Hellstorm has, and is a lot cheaper at only 800 points. However, it is definitely more accurate, and with a buffing unit nearby, it's even better. So facing a horde faction, this particular unit has a definite home, and can certainly put a dent in heavy armoured factions as well. Before we get to the Magma Cannon, quick note that the Cursed Dwarves can feel the Hell Cannon and the Soul of Damnation, which is of course the Regiment of Renown of the Hell Cannon. Because if you look closely at the unit, the models that control it are Chaos Dwarves, as they created this particular unit for the Chaos. So, of course, they can use it as well. The Magma Cannon is much the same as the Frame Cannon for Dwarves. Both are priced the same, but the unit has less damage than the Dwarf version. But at 1,300 cost, it is a good choice against Horde Factions. So, the Dread Quake Mortar. 2,000 cost, and considered to be one of the most powerful artillery units in the Warhammer world. So you can see, it's not even worth talking about the stats, apart from that it only gets 8 shots. And also, it can fire while moving, but when it's moving, it's only movement is only 20, still nothing to write home about. It's also got good range, and has a shell-shocked ability, reducing speed and leadership by significant numbers. So normally I'll just tell you about the AP, but for a change of pace, I thought I'd just show you instead. Yep, that's a pretty insane stat yank. Well, oh, sorry, that's completely my mistake. That's the wrong card. That's actually Queen Bess's card. This is actually the Dread Queen Mortar. Yep, pretty crazy. And look at that real time. That's all very well, I'm sure you're saying. But what does it look like? So, let's start off with a nice quick experiment. Let's launch a shell. And there's two units worth of spearmen and shields, which have locked down with a unit of hobgoblins. And with the accuracy buffer on, I have targeted one of those units. And that's the end of that equal bit of battle. Stupidly powerful. And this is why we need Chaos Dwarves in Total Warhammer 2. Let's not wait for Warhammer 3. So finally, we are looking at the Arse unit here. The Iron Demon War Engine. So I thought I'd just give one more shout out to the modern makers. As creating all these 40 units, modeling them, put them into the game, even though they are pretty much sure that this particular faction is going to be in the third version. It's still a, a huge achievement, so congrats again to Decomposed, Tanit, Chrysoid and Twitchy. So what can be more scary than a mortar? Well, this unit 2,400 points, steam tank, and a sort of a shotgun for a cannon. The range at 160 makes it devastating at that range. And here is the footage of said cannon in action. With the excellent close range, this gun can be seen here and the damage is formidable and it's truly a great 2 your army. Obviously the defence is non-existent, so charging is not advisable, but it causes fear and terror so you can easily break the unit if there's only a few left. There's 12 projectiles in this shot, so as you can see, it, it does, I've seen from the footage, follows a pattern straight through the unit. But a good few shots on a target is easy enough to weaken the enemy's resolve. And usually close to breaking, and then you can just push in some units to finish it off. So that's the end of the Mammoth Unit Guide to the Chaos Faction. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, and I'll take you up that campaign in my next video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you there.